There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground, far from all worries and troubling sound. When I go there to be by myself, only me. I hope that you can hear me all right, but I am on the Sussex writing retreat. It is so incredible. I just actually can't believe that I've got a few days of time for me to focus on something that I have wanted to do for quite a few years, in fact, since I started Ask Charlie, and I just haven't had the time. And so this is such a treat to come away and, um, and have some time for me. The, the course is actually held in a marquee. It's heated, so actually it's really cosy. And look, they have decorated it so beautifully. There is bunting, there are plants, there's a beautiful china, biscuits with our names on. I mean, the whole thing, they have put so much thought and care and attention into it. It's just such a treat. I have just spent the last, I don't know, 45 minutes brainstorming my first book and I'm actually feeling really, really excited. I'm buzzing because I didn't even know where to start and I put my hand up and I had a chat with, with Daisy and Lisa and I was like, I don't know what to do and they just, they just, just were so kind and just have given me the kind of inspiration and the confidence in myself to, to get it out. So it's really, really exciting. You can tell I'm buzzing. It's almost lunchtime. I'm going to go back into the marquee because it's actually really warm and cosy in there. But I will continue over the next few days um, to share this with you because I feel really, really um, grateful and blessed that I've got some time to focus on something that I really have wanted to do for a long time and just have been too busy with life and sometimes you need to just take yourself out of your life out of your home out of what's going on and just make time for the things that you really really want to do and you're passionate about and so yeah i'm really excited anyway i'm going back in there and i will chat to you again a bit later My best friend Sarah and I used to spend all our time in a place we called the Dollhouse. It was just an old abandoned cottage in the woods behind our house, but it was heaven to us until one of our games went wrong and someone ended up dead. Mm -hmm. It was an accident, or at least Sarah told me it was, but when I tried to tell the police I wasn't involved, they didn't believe me. When the Dollhouse girls were splashed across the newspapers, it was my face they showed under the headlines. I'm the one who stood trial. Now, 20 years on, I've made a new life with a new identity. I have a wonderful husband called Carl and Jacob, our adorable son. Despite everything in my past, I'm happy. Then the first night note arrives, uh, arrives, found you. Soon, other threats start coming. The person behind them is clear they've grown to, they're willing to hurt my family, to hurt Jacob, to get to me. I know who they are and I know what they're capable of. The other doll, the girl who got away with murder. Ooh. I've just finished the first day of the Sussex writing retreat. Oh my goodness, it's just been the most incredible day. Incredible, inspiring, just incredible. I've tried to get my words out. I do, um, it's just amazing. I'm sitting in the car park about to go and get dog food. And I spoke to Sai um, a moment ago and he said, how was it? And I said to him, I'm feeling drained and tired, but in a really kind of excited way. Like I actually just want to get home and write and get it all out. I've actually written the first big chunk of my book today. Like not properly written it but it's all in kind of bullet form and I just need to expand on that and I'm just so excited that I've actually started and they were so kind and so lovely because I've always been so underconfident and so kind of unsure of myself and just the love and support in that tent was incredible incredible some of the people in the course 
are, well not some of them, they're all fascinating individuals and it's so lovely kind of hearing their stories and getting to know them a bit more and I can't tell you I'm really really excited for tomorrow and the next day it's just amazing anyway I must go and get dog food my battery's about to die as well so um, I must fly now but I think it's just so important to take some time and what was really lovely I've just said I've got to go and now I'm prattling on again what was so lovely is just having time for me to focus on it like at home there's a distraction the phone's ringing a dog's barking something's distracting me and actually if you want to do something it's a really good idea to kind of book on a course or take yourself out of your life for a moment and just focus on that thing that you want to do and this has given me the kind of the inspiration the confidence the encouragement to start and I don't think I'm going to want to stop it's so exciting anyway enough 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 I must go and get the dog food I can't wait for tomorrow so I'm just arriving for um, day two of the Sussex writing retreat oh my goodness yesterday was incredible it was so incredible I just um, yeah, it was absolutely buzzing. Don't worry, I'm not driving on a proper road, I'm just driving on a farm track, which is probably why it's a little bit shaky. But um, oh, I was chatting to Sai last night and he said the sweetest thing. I think it's one of the most lovely things he said. He said, um, you'll really like your mum, but all of the good qualities. And she would be so proud of you for everything that you've done, but especially this, because she, he knows and she knew how um, I really struggle with writing and it was just so lovely what he said to me and I'm just really grateful for um, Lisa and Daisy for giving me this opportunity to come on the retreat and do this and have some time for me and some time for me to do something that I have wanted to do for a very long time but actually been too scared and never known where to even begin and it's just really exciting. Anyway, I must park the car and go in um, and start day two. So lunch has arrived, it's such a treat to be cooked for and we've had a really, really productive morning. We've been working on letter writing to publishers and agents and things like that. It's very exciting. So I've just arrived for day three and you can start the morning with some yoga and meditation if you like, which is a really lovely way to kind of calm the mind. Oh my goodness. We just had the most amazing morning so this is the third day of the writing retreat and I've learned so much just taking yourself out of your kind of normal life normal world and doing something really different and having to focus and I've done things over the last three days that normally in the past I would have been absolutely petrified to read out things that I had written. And actually I put my hand up today and I was like, I wanna read mine. And it's been phenomenal. I've met incredible, incredible people. They're just really small groups of people. So it's, it's not overwhelming and everybody can talk and it's really, it's informal, it's relaxed, it's cozy, it's inviting. It's just been phenomenal and I've got like the the basic plan of my book and loads of kind of you know chapters and quotes and all sorts of things done which is and now it gives me the confidence that I know when I'm when I'm you know by myself to 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 continue and they're so sweet and supportive they've said you know anytime get in touch we're here for you it's just been phenomenal and then they've had really amazing people come and talk to us so we've just had um, a literary agent come and talk about how they work and how to submit and how you know what should be um, included in your submission it just 
so unbelievably helpful. So if anybody is thinking of writing a book, if you think you might have a book in you, if you've always kind of dreamt about it but not known where to start, I cannot more highly recommend the Sussex Writing Retreats. Daisy and Lisa who run it are just gorgeous. We've just had a big, big, big hug and they're, they're friends now. It's been amazing and just in three days. Anyway, I am buzzing. I need to stop rambling to you because we are driving to Devon uh, this afternoon. <laughs> We're taking two cars, which I don't normally want to do because normally I like Simon to drive and me to nod off and have a sleep or catch up on loads of things I haven't had time to do, like emailing people back. Um, but we're taking two cars. We've actually got um, Coco's best friend Neve coming and Neve's sister, which would just be so much fun. So there's five children. We're only taking three dogs with us. We're taking Penny, Flo and Lola because um, we've got guests. So we're in the main farmhouse, we've got guests and I just didn't think it was fair to, to upset the guests with six dogs. So um, Di is holding the fort at home, which is amazing. We've sort of packed. I've still got a bit of packing to do. And we are taking a trailer because we're taking surfboards because the children are surfing. I am not going to be surfing because... I get cold in a wetsuit in July. There's no way. It was minus one this morning. There's no way I'm getting in the sea. Um, I might change my mind, but I don't think so. Anyways, I need to get cracking because we've got to load everything up, finish packing and head down to Devon. The car is loaded. The trailer is hitched. We've got, um, we've actually bought Bonnie as well. Size in his car with Archie Brooke. I have got Gus Coco Neve and the dogs and we are going to head off hopefully it's a good journey hopefully we don't hit too much traffic and um yeah we'll see you down there We've just stopped at this really excellent farm shop to let the dogs have a little stretch of their legs. And actually, I'm going to show you. Um, it's called Till's Somerset, and we discovered it last year. We stopped here, and it's absolutely fab. Brilliant, brilliant farm shop with all sorts of goodies. So um, I'll take you inside quickly. This is just the most beautiful, beautiful farm shop. I think you've ever seen. It's so lovely. And Simon, so Simon was ahead of me, they overtook. And he said, I'm going to stop at Teal's, we'll meet you there. I mean, it's just, just gorgeous. And I think we're going to get something for supper just to make life really easy. We don't fancy McDonald's or anything like that, but they do have food to go so we'll see what they've got they've also actually I forgot they've got a butcher's here too fruit and veg and look there he is he's actually phoning me to say where are you darling I'm here vlogging you <laughs> there's the butcher's and um cheese too I have got a basket full of goodies but look I've just spotted Tam Mason's hand scrubs in here So we've nearly arrived. We have actually had a pretty good journey. There's been a lot of laughter. Sai and Archibrook are already there, so hopefully they've unloaded their lot and they're ready to help us unload and get sorted. But it's been a really, really good journey um, on the whole. And the dogs, you can hear Penny's, Penny and Lola squeaking. Um, it's been really good. That farm shop we stopped at is amazing. Anyway, um, we are pretty much here, so I'm going to stop chatting and um, I'm going to show you around the farmhouse before this lot um, <laughs> put their stuff everywhere and it's chaos.
So I'm just going to give you a really, really quick tour. So this is the sitting room. And then there's a little conservatory which opens onto the river through there. And then I'll just open the kitchen door. It's so good to be down here. Sorry, I haven't put the lights on, but there's Rayburn. There is the river out there. Fridge, and then there's boot room through there, downstairs loo. This is a whistle top stop to a laundry room. And then I shall whisk you upstairs super, super quickly because so it's really cute that we unpack and get sorted. Look. There's a stream. And this is the master bedroom here. So this was mummy's room. I've changed it a little bit because it was very, very chintzy before. And there's a little bathroom off there. And then this is the view out of this window. I've just noticed that the windows need cleaning. And then down the corridor, we have got this small double here. We're gonna hear everyone's, everyone's come in. Twin bedroom here, bathroom here, and a large double. This used to be my room when I was little. And again, it's got the lovely view of the stream out there. So, back up the corridor. I will leave all the details in the description below if you are interested in coming down here but over the next few days I will show you much more. I love that little chap there. I can smell the wild garlic already. Good morning, good morning. Um, oh, walking along here, I'm gonna have to, in fact, there is wild garlic. I'm gonna show you. This is what you're looking for. This is Lola and wild garlic but the smell is just incredible. So I um, didn't get up early. I had a really lovely lion and I'm just taking the dogs for a good walk. Simon said he'd come too, but I want to go for a good, good walk. So um, like an hour quick marching kind of walk and I thought I'd bring you along with me. And also the main purpose for this is to have a good look around um, particularly the top fields and the bottom fields so I'm going to walk those as well today and then I've got a meeting with Billy the farmer just to chat through anything we need doing because that is my main purpose for being down here is to make sure that everything's in order. I've turned you back around. Um, so this is Lola and Florence's first time down to Devon, which is really exciting. It's, um, it's pretty wet. In fact, when I woke up and I heard the rain, I was like, mm, I'm not rushing to get out of bed. Now, I haven't actually had a shower. I've just put some lippy on and my pearls in, thinking that I would fool you <laughs> that I was up and ready at the crack of dawn. But actually, I'm really not. But that is what holidays are all about. Just recharging the batteries a little bit. And we actually went to bed quite late last night. <laughs> we worked out how we could get Netflix on the TV down here, which is terribly exciting. And we've been watching Jack Whitehall travels with my father. We've all been in stitches. So, so, so funny. Um, I think it's quite an old series. Uh, I think we're very late to the party but we have thoroughly been enjoying that. Now I'm gonna stop chatting to you because it doesn't, doesn't look like much of a hill, but actually it is. And I'll be really huffing and puffing by the top of it. So I'm gonna whiz up here and chat to you at the top. Sadly, there's not gonna be any amazing views today because it's so wet. And I'm wishing I had brought my waterproof tools with me left them in Sussex, which was foolish.
got two very, very wet sausages. <laughs> Bless them. I'm just um, right at the top now, just walking along this little lane and then we'll start heading back down and round. Just walking back down the drive for brekkie. It's been a lovely walk. I wanted to go into the top field, but actually there are sheep in there and I didn't want the dogs to chase them. So um, I will do that later without the dogs. But it's just so beautiful. We've got some solar panels down there. So Mum was really clever. She put um, solar panels in, a, a biomass boiler, which burns wood pellets, and we've got a borehole. So we are pretty self-sufficient, which is amazing do have some guests that complain about this drive which is a little bit bumpy in places but it's so difficult to know what to do with it because it costs an absolute bomb to tarmac it there are channels like this which are essential because when there's heavy rain it basically becomes a river so there needs to be runoffs but if you're used to living in London and having perfectly flat roads it's a bit of a shock for guests that come. So we're looking into options, but it's not going to be easy and it's probably going to be pretty expensive, but it's something I need to do at some point when it's run off ahead. But I've got a turning around the other way, so lovely seeing the daffodils. So we've got this massive, massive barn, which we almost lost. <laughs> um, Oh gosh, this time a year ago, there was awful, awful winds and the barn was in a bit of a precarious state. I mean, it still looks pretty precarious, but um, it's much better than it was. But it's so lovely seeing animals in here. So the sheep and the baby lambs. Um, Lola, come on, Lola out. I know mum would be really, really pleased to see the little animals in here. The little sweet, tiny, tiny lambs. And then these guys yes hello it's so gorgeous I can't tell you how much joy this brings me seeing seeing animals on the farm so in total there's 26 acres that uh, Billy rents to have his animals here so for the past however many years this has all just been sort of storage and empty it's so gorgeous seeing these little calves in here and then obviously we've got the wood which has come from from here from um, the other side of the river I'll show you in a minute and so when a tree comes down we keep the wood to use for the fire I've just been um, chatting to Billy who's beside me so we've got these calves in here and then the lambs are in the top uh, top of the barn so we'll go and have a look at them in a minute how old are these Billy? This is six months. It's so lovely having animals here on the farm. We haven't had animals down here for quite a few years, so it's really lovely to see them. Um, the dogs are intrigued too. Look, I've got Flo and Penny beside me. Oh my goodness, I didn't realise we had these too. They're just um, slightly, slightly surprised because... Um, Bonnie's come up. Billy, how old are these little ones? They're about uh, beginning of, middle of January. Middle of January. Billy's camera shy, doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be on my vlog. <laughs> oh, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Hello. So I knew that Billy was lambing, but I didn't know that we had calves in here as well. This is so lovely to see. A proper farm. So these are in here to lamb in the fields out there. And look what we've got down here. So hopefully we'll see some lambs maybe being born over the next few days. Billy, how old are these? These are a couple of days old. Look at that little spotty one. He's so sweet. So sweet. And then there's a few more over there. This is very, very exciting. 
This one is so friendly. Really, really sweet. Billy, what breed are they? That there is a Devon cross. Uh, and this the is other one too, another black ones are Angus cross. A Devon cross, this one here, and the darker ones are Angus crosses. <laughs> you are so sweet. This magnolia just coming out. So this is where we had the marquee when Simon and I got married down here. And then you see we've got the wooded area here. So that's where trees come down. We keep them. And then we planted these fruit trees down here. So um, we've got some fruit that we can use. And then we've got these guys, they're a little bit older in this barn here. Bill is going to make a start on fencing along here. So he's also a fencer, which is terribly handy. And so this will then be secure for the animals to be out in this pasture. <laughs> These crazy kids are gonna go surfing. Jamie is amazing. We've just worked out this is our fourth year of surfing with him. He's an absolute legend. I am not going to today. Just too cold. I forgot my hat and looked like a proud hat. I have actually got my book in the car so I might go and hide there and um, leave these crazy kids to it. just had an hour in bed I got under the throw because I was really cold and got back from surfing the children all had showers and baths and I thought that it would be a bit selfish if I said I wanted to have one too because I hadn't actually been in but I wanted to warm up so I thought you know what I've got a bit of time I'm going to dive into bed with my book I am reading um this all My Mothers by Joanna Glenn and it was recommended by Jo from At Home at the Farmhouse. I'm sure that's her Instagram handle. I can never com completely remember. Home at the Farmhouse. I'm sure that's it. It's just beginning to get a little bit dark actually. I've realised nobody can see me. Anyway, I need to get up and kind of get going because I'm recording a podcast episode with my friend in Canada. Such a lovely friend. He's an old school friend and I cannot wait to chat um, to him. So we are doing that. I'm not sure when that episode will be coming out. My podcast, as I am speaking to you, hasn't actually launched yet, but I have recorded um, a number of episodes. So I'm sort of ready to go. And actually, I know when we get back from here, I don't want to spend too much time working because the children are on Easter holidays and I just want to have um, time with them. So I'm kind of getting ahead and he's traveling. So now works really well from him. So I'm hoping that the Wi-Fi is going to work well enough for me to, to chat to him. And then I've got a couple of meetings tomorrow down here, just kind of getting things in order. And yeah, it's just nice slowing down and actually reading books. I don't read books like novels when I'm at home because once I'm into a book I can't put it down and I will stay up all night. In fact I'll not do the jobs I need to do because I'll be reading and I'm not disciplined enough to put a book down. I know that sounds ridiculous. So I limit reading books to holidays I need to um I need to try and get better at home but once I'm into a good book I will find myself kind of sloping off and like not cleaning the house and just having my nose in a book or staying up really really late or creeping downstairs once Simon's asleep and and reading because I don't like to read on a Kindle or or anything I actually really love to have a physical book in my hands and yeah, so I, I really look forward to coming on holiday and just, just, yeah, reading away. Anyway, I must get up. 
gonna have a mug of hot water with a squeeze of lemon and take the dogs out, get a little bit of fresh air and then get ready to chat to Dan. I have been out for a forage for some wild garlic leaves and the great thing about being down here in Devon is I didn't have to go very far, it's literally just out there. The smell is amazing and wild garlic is around from March through until June and honestly if you can get your hands on some you can make so many different recipes. Wild garlic pesto is amazing, you can put it in lots of different things, you can put it in burgers, you can put it in lots and lots of different recipes, wonderful with risotto, and it's just a really, really great thing that you can approach for. It's free and absolutely delicious. I'm gonna show you today how I make wild garlic butter. So first thing I'm gonna do is just rinse these leaves. So my leaves are washed, and I'm just gonna pat them dry with some kitchen roll, or you can use a tea towel whatever you have got but just dry your leaves a little bit and then lay them on top of one another so when you've got your leaves laid on top of one another just roll them it doesn't need to be precise at all into um, into a round and then just cut them You don't want too much of the stalks at the end, so I will discard those and I will just roll these tops and just slice those up. Now, depending um, you know, how finely you want it chopped, you can leave it like that or you can just chop a little bit more. I haven't got the best knives down here. But just roughly chop your garlic. So Sai got this delicious butter. Rhoda's do the most delicious clotted cream and their butter is pretty excellent too. So I've left this by the Rayburn, just softening because you want softened butter for this. So I'm going to place my softened butter in a bowl. I have got some sea salt here and I'm just going to put uh, quite a decent amount of sea salt. Um, the equivalent probably of about a teaspoon just into the butter and using a fork I'm just going to squash it down as best I can. So you don't want your butter to be melted, you just want it to be softened and I'm just working that sea salt in so it's sort of evenly distributed throughout the butter. And then when you're happy with it, sprinkle in your garlic leaves. So I used about eight leaves there and you know, it just whatever you know you have. You don't want it to be too overpowering, but you just want enough leaves in there. So I've now got my butter mixed with my leaves. I'm just gonna pop it onto my chopping board. And this is where <laughs> you need to get your hands involved. I'm gonna get some tin foil ready. In a moment. So I'm just going to squidge this into a sausage. 
You want to work quite quickly, you don't want the butter to melt too much. So just squidge it, it doesn't need to be perfect, but literally like that. And then pop it on to your foil. I'm just gonna wipe my hands. And then just roll it up like so and fold the ends over. So roll it up into a parcel and then that is ready to go into the freezer. Once it is frozen, it's really easy to unwrap and to slice it up. You want to slice it into, well, it, it depends on how you want it, but I slice it into about the thickness of a pound coin or slightly more. And then you can put that on top of a steak. You can pop it on top of a roast chicken when you're cooking a chicken. You can put it into a risotto. You can put it into all sorts of different things, but it's such a great way to use wild garlic. And this will store in the fridge for at least three months, maybe even you know slightly longer. And it's just a great thing to have to flavour all sorts of all sorts of things when you're cooking. And I love being able to forage for wild garlic. I you know I love cooking seasonally, and this is just a really great, easy way to make wild garlic butter, pop it in the freezer, and then use it when you are ready to. So the wild garlic has been in the freezer, and I thought that we could put some on our peas. I'm just going to slice a little bit off. Now you can slice this all up, pop it in a Tupperware and just get, get a little bit out when you need it. But that is just going to add some lovely flavour to our peas. It's so lovely being down here. The children have been surfing. It's way too cold. I'm not brave enough. North side, we're not going in. We can watch the children. It's cold enough watching them. It's actually probably warmer if we went in, but it's not for me this time of year. <laughs> a bit of a wuss. I have had some lovely, lovely long walks and I had meetings this morning. I've got meetings again tomorrow morning, um, just making sure that everything is in tip top condition, ready for the, the season to kick off. We're actually open all year round, but it's quite quiet in the autumn and winter and so um, yeah now is the time to make sure that everything is in order and under control. The window cleaner has been which is seriously exciting. I think I've been waiting about 18 months um, for him to come. Well in fact I think this is the third one that Alison found and he even did inside as well which is really really amazing he's such a nice chap and I've booked him in to come on a regular basis because I think having clean windows makes a huge difference that's Lola and body if you can hear background noise they've just been fed um, and then something amazing 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 we've been looking for a decorator probably for the last three years and it's been really hard to find somebody I've had somebody that I thought was booked in to start actually now and I contacted him just to sort of finalise things and he said oh no sorry I can't do it. Oh, goodness. I've tried two other decorators and they haven't come back to me and lovely Alison I was having a meeting with her this morning and I said we really need to find a decorator, any ideas and she sent me a message this afternoon to say I bumped into your mum's painter and decorator and he'd love to do it. He's gonna give you a call later. He is such a lovely man. Mum was really, really fond of him. She nicknamed him um, Budgie. And she was, she was so fond of him. They had a really lovely relationship. He did so much work when she first moved here and, and he worked for her for quite a few years on and off um, because mummy ran the cottage next door as holiday lets and she did B&B in the house. And, uh, yeah, Buddy was always around and I'm going to speak to him later. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he can do it for us, which would be just amazing. And maybe it's meant to be that those other decorators didn't work out and actually having somebody that, that knows the place and knew my mother well um, would be really, really lovely. I'm yet to walk up to the spot where um, her ashes are scattered and have a chat with her. I've had the dogs with me and there are sheep in the field at the moment and I just haven't wanted the dogs to chase them. So I will wander up on my own and have a quiet moment and chat to her. But I just, 
I love being here. It's so peaceful. It's so restful. There's always lots to do as well, but I just gently potter and do it. And um, yeah, just enjoy, enjoy being here. I find there's, the pace of life is so much slower and I don't have the distractions I have at home. So I can just sort of gently plod on and, and get what needs to be done, done. Thoroughly enjoying my book and that, um, that's lovely, lovely way in the evenings just to go upstairs and read and mid-afternoon as well. I haven't got so into it that I haven't been able to tackle the jobs, but um, we've still got a few more days down here, which will be really, really great before we head back up to Sussex and then start sort of um, making plans for Easter and things like that. We've got a few trips planned, which I will bring you along with, with us, with me. And yes, anyway, I really hope that you have enjoyed this week's vlog. The writing retreat was so incredible. It was just lovely just to take a little bit of time out and focus um, on, on my book, my first book. I don't know when it will come out. I've got a lot to do, um, but the process has started and it's always exciting to start something like that and get the ball rolling and when I've got a little bit more time, um, once the children have gone back to school, hopefully I can um, dedicate more time and, and get further along in the process. But watch this space, I don't think I'll be coming anytime soon, but hopefully in the not too distant future. Anyway, please um, do give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Leave me a comment and um, I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Have a happy weekend and I will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.